our Old Testament scripture this morning. Oh, you lost me for a second. There we go. Our Old Testament scripture this morning comes out of Psalm 89, and it says this, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. If you could please stand and join us for our hymn this morning, it's 526, The Solid Rock. Christians all around the world today, let us say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I think, um, Cam, there's, a, there's kind of a, it's, it's a tinny little something going on in there. We're going to do a sound check right here. We tried to do one earlier this morning, and we just couldn't get to it. Check one, two. Check one, two. We do take uh, cash, and we do take credit cards as well. Check one, three. Check one, four. You can put your offering in the door over it by the office. Check. You can send it in through the check uh, uh, anywhere you want. And as you're listening, uh, we don't want to... You know, we're not all about money around here. Check one, two, three. Uh, we, we think we got it. I'm, I think I'm, it's still a little tinny up here. It's uh, you, is this, I'm, this is my tinny day. So last week we had the, the, the wire actually went out in my uh, thing, and we switched those out this morning as well too. So uh, I think we're all right. I think we're ready to go. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your patience, everybody. Check.
So when I first started out, I mentioned this before, I was, I was blessed to work with one of the most wonderful uh, senior pastors I think that's ever been created. And um, his, his name was Fred McAllister, and as I was a young pastor, and, and just about ev everything we did that they didn't, things they don't teach in seminary is just about everything you need to actually do ministry. It's just a lot of academic and theology and all the, you know, but not real practical a lot of ways. And so I, I had uh, not been a Christian that long. I was just starting out and uh, Fred would, uh, he, everything we did for the first few years, he would say, I'd say, well, we're, we're doing the wedding. How do we do weddings? Oh, we're just going it. The next, next time we do a funeral, so Fred, what, you know, this funeral thing, I've only been like to one funeral in my life. What are we going to do? Oh, we're just going to wing it. And so I would go home and I, and I, and I was, I, it made, made me a little nervous, you know, from time to time. And I'd come home and go, how's your day? And so I finally told Linda, um, I, I've got a name for Fred. It's Reverend Wing It. And, um, but over the years, it, it probably is one of the best teaching uh, opportunities I've ever had because I learned to wing it really quick. And, and the Christian faith, more often than not, is about winging it um, and, and going to God in prayer and, and, and receiving what he has for us. And uh, so on, on mornings like this, we just kind of roll with it. Check, one, two, no, 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 we're not. We're not we're, we're, that's at the offering later. So this morning, we've been working on uh, looking at the, the Lord's Prayer for a few weeks, and we're going to finish up this morning. And I hope, you've been, I hope you've been thinking about the Lord's Prayer a little bit, what it means to you when you pray certain things, because, again, we, we get in the habit of saying something kind of in routine, and it's easy to say it without really thinking about what we, what we meant by that or how we, we look at that. The Lord's Prayer is, uh, as, as I mentioned, I believe it's not so much as a prayer that we, we need to recite every time we sit down, but we look at it as a principle to live by and to pray by. And some days we may focus on one part of it more than others. And another part, we may take enough time to go through the whole Lord's Prayer. But it, it's, it's really something that we pray through, not something we just recite. And so this morning, we, we're going to hear these, uh, these words uh, from Matthew chapter 6, 13. And, and we'll move on to something else next week. But from the King James Version, Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, it, we hear the word, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So some of that in other versions is not there. The whole last part, which talks about for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen is something that is, is in some of the later texts that they found and they put in. And so you may be reading it from another text. Well, what happened to that whole part we pray on Sunday morning? Well, it's in the Lord's Prayer, but it's not. It, it, I think it's wonderful to, to be there. And it's been a foot, maybe a footnote in your Bible that some manuscripts have this part in there. So don't be alarmed that somehow you got a defective Bible. Um, it's not a, not a concern. My wife is extremely detailed and, and she can find just uh, typos in just about anything and she's never found a typo in the real text of the bible but she has found typos in the notes of bibles and uh, which is kind of disconcerting in some ways they uh, so when, when people when they when they first started making the bibles before the gutenberg press and the, the 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 people the scribes would sit there and they had the holy script and they would start writing and they had to know exactly how many how many words there were, and, and after they finished writing it all out, um, they would have to go back and count it. Can you imagine? You got to somewhere, you know you left out two words, and how do we go find those? Uh, we're, we're so blessed to have some very accurate, if, some, if people tell you uh, the, the scriptures are just not accurate, just, just, just know that they have been poured over and looked at and studied as more than any other book that's ever come along and you don't have to know the details of that but uh, but in your own assurance please know the bible is very reliable and it has some some very reliable sources so i remember when i was growing up watching um, television there was a show um, or a comedian that uh, many of us have not heard this name in many, many years. And some of you are going, I've never heard that name before. His name was Flip Wilson. Flip Wilson. Uh, he, he said he was very religious. He went to church. He'd grown up in the church of what's happening now. And uh, he was a, a really funny comedian. But he, he was the kind of comedian 
it was not off color, but it probably would not be allowed to be on television today. It was uh, some of the things that he would, would talk about. And um, he had this one character that he would, would play, and he would get into costume. Literally, um, it was Geraldine. And Geraldine was a pastor's wife, and in, a past, in, in this one particular comedy skit that he would say, Geraldine would, would often say, it, as Geraldine, that the Lord made me do it. The devil made me do it, and I'm sorry, the devil made me do it, and so he blamed everything on the devil, and, and everything that would go wrong, he, she would, he, she would blame it on the devil. So Geraldine, in this one skit, her husband asked her why she bought a new expensive dress, and immediately she prize, replies, the devil made me do it. She then goes on to explain how the devil followed her down the street and forced her to look into the window of a dress shop. Uh, the devil seduced her with praise and then forced her to sign her husband's name on the check to buy the dress. I, I think we, we sometimes we struggle to know, when am I being tempted? When is the devil tempting me? When am I making my own bad decisions? As the Apostle Paul, as I mentioned, uh, he would often say, I find myself doing the things I don't want to do and not doing the things that I want to do. And, and we live in a, in a world, um, it, there really are so many different temptations in so many different areas. And this morning, as we, as we begin to read this, this pa- the first part of this prayer, and lead us not into temptation. And so as I sat down and I said, well, I'm going to practice what I'm preaching. I'm going to sit down. What do I really mean and what do I think when I'm praying? And Lord, lead us not into temptation. As I look at others, I like to look at a, a scripture and compare it to other scriptures. And as I f- saw this scripture lead us not into temptation, I was reminded of the book of James, chapter 1, verse 13. And James writes, No one, when tempted, should say, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. So as we pray, Lord, don't lead us into temptation. There's something there that, uh, what, is, what do we mean when we're saying, I, Lord, don't lead us into temptation. Does God lead us into temptation? Not if you believe James chapter 1. Now, does God test us? Absolutely, God will test us. But if, if I, as I read scripture, we are not to, be, to think that God is walking around looking to lead us and to trip us up every day. And so as I, as I did a lot, there's been a lot of discussion around this one little verse and a lot of people struggle to figure out exactly what it means. But as, as, as people think about the temptation to be, if, if we're trying to tempt someone, we're trying to make them what? Fail, fall. Uh, to, to somehow to fall into something that, that, that is not good and, and the where we should be. When God tempts, uh, tests us, to be tested means that we're putting someone to a test to, to make sure that they grow, that they learn, uh, that their character, God tests us so that our, our character might grow and that we might become more like who? Jesus. So as we pray that prayer, don't, don't feel like you're Flip Wilson thinking that the, the, the Lord made me do it. And then you have to wrestle with, well, did the devil make me do it? Or did I do it? Or were my friends a really bad influence? There's a lot to unpack right there, isn't it? There's a whole lot of things going on when we pray uh, that the Lord lead us not to temptation. So I ask myself as, as I pray, and I've been praying this prayer for, uh, for the last couple of weeks and thinking about, Lord, what am I praying when I pray this? And I started as I backed up and I took the, the very beginning of this, uh, this passage and where it starts and it says, and lead us. When we ask the God to start to lead us, um, a different way for me to look at, at this was uh, that, that I pray when, Lord, I want you to, to, to lead me and not into temptation. What I'm asking for is protection from those areas where I sometimes get tempted, not that God tempts me to go there, but Lord, help me not to be tempted to go into areas that I, I naturally find myself going that, that draw me away from you. Help me not to be led into temptation that other people might try on their own to, to, to lead me away from you. And, and God, help me not to be tempted in a spiritual sense from, from Satan to be, uh, to be going in ways that are, are separate from you. We, we are reminded of, 
of Jesus in his time with, uh, with Satan at the beginning in the wilderness uh, when he was starting his ministry and he went out and Satan was trying to trip him up and trying to cause him to fall and he, he knew the way he fought that was to, to know scripture. He was the word of God in, in flesh but he responded to those temptations with other words from God uh, and, and so it's really important to know these kind of words when when we feel in our soul that or, or our spirit God's tempting you right now he's trying to get you to to make a mistake just know if you know the scripture you go God is not tempting me and when I'm praying I'm praying Lord don't let me be tempted lead me lead me in a path of righteousness for your namesake lead me beside where still waters God leads us in in good places and so we can trust as we pray, Lord, lead us not into temptation, that we can, we can pray and be, be assured that God is leading us in wonderful places. One of the first verses when I think about uh, being led is, is that, that comes to my mind is a scripture that I learned as a young Christian, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. And this is the New Living Translation. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. And when I'm praying, Lord, don't lead us into temptation. What I'm really praying for me, and, this is, and I want you to ask yourself, what am I praying? What am I really asking God? I'm praying, Lord, don't let me go down that path that I'll go on without you. But help me to, to follow you and to seek you and to trust you that I might find the paths that you want me to go to. In the Good News Translation, uh, we hear, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Never rely on what you think you know. Well, that's a hard one, isn't it? Because we think, you know, in this day and age, we think we know it all. And if we don't know it all, we're, oh, well, let's just Google it. We'll find out everything that we need to know on Google. Google is great, but Google is not the Word of God. So and there are a lot of areas where we need to trust the Word of God and not just rely on the quick answer, the quick way of going on to the Internet. And, and it's important for us to study it a little bit. Remember the Lord in everything you do, and He will show you the right way. Not the way that leads us to temptation and falling, but the right way that leads us to righteous living. And, and, and when we often hear in the in scriptures of people talking about we want to be righteous, or the right of the people who were the righteous. And it doesn't mean that we're goody two shoes or that we're above anybody else or any of those things. The people who are right are the people who try to live by God's word in God's way and acknowledge that we can't do it on our own, that we need God's help desperately. And for me, this part of the scripture here this morning with people who are right with God through Jesus Christ. This whole passage right here this morning, just a few words. It, but, but yet, I think it is something that really is important for us to look at, or obviously I wouldn't be preaching this morning. But lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. So it's a, it's a, a, a prayer for us, part of the prayer of the Lord's Prayer, I believe, that we acknowledge, I can't do any of this on my own. Uh, Romans chapter 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Paul reminds us that we, we on our own, we, will, we don't need anybody often to lead us down the path of temptation because left to our own devices, we will often stumble there freely. And so this, pass, this passage this morning is one that invites us uh, to trust in God and to acknowledge we need him with all our might. But deliver us from evil. Um, some verses have, but deliver us from the evil one. Uh, either way, what we're, what we're asking is that, God, we would trust in you and not be deceived and not be led and not be devoured. We, we are, even though in this world we, we don't hear many people talk about it in, in this way, but we are in a, in a spiritual battle. They're, they're lot, we turn on the, war, the, the, the news and we hear wars and rumors of wars and all the battles and all the things, but I don't know how you could sit through um, 20 minutes of one of our news stations and not realize that there's evil in the world. There's just so many bad things going on, and, and I don't always know exactly where that is. 
again, when I, when I hear Geraldine, as Foot Wilson as Geraldine, what I hear Geraldine saying is blaming everything on Satan. And, and I know that on many days, I'm, I'm my worst enemy. I don't need Satan to trip me up. But I know, um, and, I, and I think that Satan often has so many more important things to do than deal with me. Now, he might have like a, a minion of a minion of a minion of a minion down there saying, all right, you're in training. Go mess with Bryant for a while. I don't know if it works that way or not. But uh, I, I do believe this. If I believe the word of God and I hear about Jesus struggling with Satan and the, and the, and the evil in the world, that we still are as, as spiritual people struggling with evil in the world. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse two, 12, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities and against powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I don't quite understand all of what that means in my daily life, and I'm not, I can't discern enough to know, but I do believe that there is a battle going on in this world between good and evil and between God and, and all of the evil that's going on in the world. And so as I pray that prayer, Lord, deliver, deliver us from evil or deliver us from the evil one. What I'm asking is, God, I can't make it in this world. All the, all the bad stuff going on, I need your help. I need your strength. I, I am not, no matter how much I study or how good I try to be, I cannot be any of those things. I believe God wants us to desperately cling to him. And when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we're given that opportunity to refocus and, and to ask God to help us. Um, I, I know that uh, lightning strikes on a Sunday morning here at Mars Hill Church are a, a regular happening, and it knocks things off, and there's all these kind of things that happens. But I also believe that there's a power at work in the world that doesn't want good stuff to go on here at Mars Hill Church. And uh, some of the timing, the things that happen from time to time, I go, wow, now that's just a, a, either an incredible co coincidence or there we really are fighting a struggle that sometimes is, is a spiritual battle. And I, I tend to believe that, that the word of God, that that's true. So when we pray, we pray, Lord, the world's messed up. I can struggle, I can fall, I can be led astray on my own devices. Lord, help me. Help me not to be led into temptation. I don't want to be. I want to be stronger. I need your help. I can't do it on my own. And God, help me not to, to fall into places uh, where, where people would do us harm because of what we believe and what we do. And help me to walk alongside others and to believe in, in, and help them as they struggle. The, the last part of this, uh, some people believe it's sort of a, again, it's why it's a footnote. It's sort of an added benediction for some people. And, uh, but what it says is, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We start the, we start the Lord's Prayer off with, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We talk about how God is awesome and all-powerful and worthy. He, he's one that we can trust. He is one that we can trust with our daily living, our daily bread. He, he comes into our lives, into our hearts. He invites us to forgive and to be a part of this wonderful transformation of this world and to bring the kingdom of God here into our world. And then when we ask for him to, to deliver us and to lead us into good places, we end up... For thine is the kingdom. Yeah, the world seems to be so many rulers, so many people looking for power, so many people trying to hold on and fight each other for so many things. But ultimately, when we look at the news, when we see, we hear what's going on, we're reminded, God, you created all this. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. God is all powerful, not partially powerful. And there is no one here on earth no political party, no country, nothing, that we are to worship above God. And we're called to, to worship him for his is the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so as we come before God this morning in prayer, I, I just want to invite you. Again, not just this week or last week or the week before, but really think about those things that we, that we say on a regular basis because we can just say it so easily. 
But it, there's some really meaningful things that God wanted to teach us through the Lord's Prayer, and he continues to do that. As we go before him this morning, let's open up our hearts. Let's pray. God, some of us may feel like we're confused about what we're being tempted to do in this world and, and, and some of the pressures, the outside pressures on us. God, I, I know I, I am sometimes my own worst tempter. But either way, Lord, help me. Uh, don't let me be led or don't lead me into temptation. God, some of the tests that I face I've not been ex extremely excited about, but God, help me to be willing to be tested if it's for your good and for your glory. But God, help me to know that you will not tempt me to fall away. You have good intentions for each and every one of us. And God, I believe we face, we face evil in this day, in this world. And when, we're, when we add to that or contribute to it through our own spiritual nature of brokenness, help us to claim your forgiveness, to claim your strength, and help us to move forward with power and for your glory. God, thank you for all the chaos here this morning. For it reminds me, even though it's a struggle some mornings, that through the chaos, you're still working. I'm not in control. And God, you will eventually be glorified. Lord, we pray today that you would be honored, glorified, and, and Lord, that we, our worship has been pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name. Just an offering. It's right here. My life is here, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you, the refiner, the refiner. I wanna be consumed. I wanna be tried. Take whatever you
hope that helps us to maybe see some of the distinction. We want to put ourselves in God's say, try us, grow us, we're willing to be used by you. But God, you're not trying to defeat us, for God is for us, and he wants us to succeed and, and grow to be more like Christ. As we go before him in, in lifting up our congregation and our, our community around us this morning, we, uh, we have a number of folks that we're, we're lifting up. We're going to, uh, again, when we see, I don't know how, it, depending on how we look at it in the, in the words we use, but uh, there's all these terrible shootings that we just keep seeing more and more in the Highland Park. And, and God, it, 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 we just, God, we need help and we, we, need, we need to act. And it's important. I don't know what the actions are. There's certainly we can't come to an agree, agreement on that. But it's just... Uh, for the families, for the loss. I know that it starts to put fear in many of our hearts. Well, if you can't go to a 4th of July parade, where can you go? And, and sometimes we can, can start to withdraw from society, the world around us. Um, maybe we need to pray for discernment and, and courage to live. But nobody there was doing anything that wasn't a, a, a good decision and a safe decision in their minds to do. But I, I, don't, I don't even actually know exactly what to pray for all that, but we lift up the Highland Park shootings and all the families and their loss. I want to pray for Mark Bowser, Bonnie's son, who's continuing to get, to get tests and prepare, preparation for treatment for throat cancer. So please remember Mark in your prayers and, and Bonnie as well. Uh, Ron Castile has, has his surgery this Tuesday. And uh, they're going, going in and doing the brain, deep brain stimulation to help with Parkinson's symptoms. And, and Ron said he should be, be watching this morning. Uh, doctors put you with, with COVID. They still make you stay home and get quarantined for a little bit before your procedure. So he said, please pray for him this Tuesday and uh, pray that he gets some relief for some of those symptoms. And then pray for him beyond that, just that... Uh, dealing with with Parkinson's and and all the issues that go along there and I, I want to thank you for your prayers for my wife Linda her dad continues to be in very perilous health and uh, she's gone up to spend uh, a, a few days trying to discern there and as you many of you know having dealt with parents and these kind of issues some of the things that they're going through one of our church members was uh, was so kind as to uh, I, I was I couldn't leave I wasn't supposed to leave until Monday or Tuesday with my eye surgery and not to lift anything and uh, one of our church members said hey how about if I drive you up there and so they drove went up together yesterday and what a blessing to be part of a church family that will step up uh, so this week um, as they figured that out at some point um, I've got the car so I've got to go get my wife um, and they love Lucky up there. He's a big hit. He behaves when he's up there. He doesn't behave here. And um, so any of your thoughts about traveling solo with a dog? Um, I was sitting there last night going through some of checklist of things. I went, oh, no, I can't drive six hours without a pit stop and going to the bathroom. And I'm not supposed to take Lucky in with me in all these different places. So if you've had any issues, uh, probably some good stories there of traveling solo with a dog and trying to find some place to go to the bathroom. Let me know how that's worked out. But uh, can, please continue to pray for Linda and, and her family. I, pre I would greatly appreciate it. Let's, let's pray. God, we, we do lift up all these people, all the ones that are on our prayer list and, and uh, that are aren't, that are on our personal prayer list. God, help us to, to find your peace, to find your presence. We don't need to ask you to be with us, God, because you're already with us. And when we, wherever we end up, you're already there. 
and you know what, what, what we're facing, and, and you provide assistance and help in so many ways. I pray for all of the, the, the terrible news, God, that we just keep hearing more and more of, wars and battles and people struggling for power all over the world, so many people who are hungry and without, and God, those who are struggling with their health this week, we lift them all up to you. God, we come before you in a moment of quiet to give, to give you thanks, to praise you, and just to rest in your presence. Lord, we come. God, yours is the, the power, the kingdom, the glory. Help us to remember and to live knowing each day that we are not truly independent. We are dependent upon you. We need you desperately. And God, that you've called us to be a light in this world, not to put any kind of cover over it, but Lord, to actually continue to shine light your light into this darkness help us not to contribute to the darkness but lord help us to live with the light shining through us the light of christ through the holy spirit we pray that prayer that jesus taught his disciples to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, thank you uh, for your generosity here in this church, your, your willingness to give and to give not only here, but through here and beyond here to make this world a bit different, different place, a better place, and to share good news with the world around us. So look for opportunities out there this week. Uh, we do have our offering plates in the back, and all, they're all the online opportunities. And uh, all kidding aside, if you have any trouble getting your, your gift and offering, let us know. We'll, we'll be more than happy to help. But we do thank you for being a generous, gracious people um, and, and God loves cheerful givers, so I know he loves you, um, even he did already, but he loves that you are cheer, cheerful givers. And so as we go out today, remember our giving continues out those doors and into the world. Uh, you'll see Michael out there and just say, Michael, we're, we're praying for you. <laughs> we thank him for all the work. He's crawling all over places today, and we're still trying to get things. One day, we're going to come here, and it's all going to be working, and I'm not going to know what to do. Um, but I look, I look forward to that day. May God bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, all circumstances, all bad news, be and abide with you all today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. God loves you, and I, I certainly do too. Thanks for being a, my church family. Go in peace, and God bless you.
your glory wants to come here. Let it fall. We want it all. Your fire is consuming. Fill this place. Set it ablaze. And I'll be a living sacrifice for you. Your fire, the refine. 